see traffic stop, police right behind me. How do you proceed if you're a concealed carrier? Stick around, we're going to give you a few scenarios. Charlton in the police department. How are you today? Um, I'm fine. It was okay. better before you pulled me up. I understand that. <laughs> uh, man, the reason I'm stopping you, I observed a traffic violation at the past intersection. Do you mm -hmm. have driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance I can take a look mm -hmm. at, please? I do. Here's my Thank licenses. You. My registration and insurance. Thank you. Ma'am, I noticed that you you're provided me with a concealed carry permit for the state mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania. I do. Are you currently carrying a weapon? I am. Okay. Um, and that weapon will be where? Um, it's on my person, appendix carry. All right, thank you. If you just leave your hands on the steering wheel for me for a couple of seconds, I'll be right back with you. I sure Hey guys, it's Kelly here from Armed and Feminine, and today we're going through a routine traffic stop um, to see how you should proceed when you're a concealed carrier. Not every state requires you to declare to the police officer that you are carrying concealed firearm. The state in which I live does not have that law, but I want to go through the scenario and just show you that it probably is a good idea that you inform law enforcement anyway that you are carrying concealed because when we get to the end of this we want to show you that for everybody's safety, yours and the law enforcement officer, it's probably a good idea to declare it. Another good suggestion would be to always keep your hands at 10 and 2 on your steering wheel to show the police officer that you mean no harm, no foul and that you can always have um, your hands in his or her view. Um, because that's important. They want to make sure that you're not reaching for anything um, that might be there. I also handed him, when he asked me for my license and registration, I also handed him my concealed carry permit. I didn't announce it. I just simply handed it to him to inform him that I was uh, carrying my firearm on me at this time. Gives him a little different approach and he knows what he's going to be dealing with when he finishes conducting um, his traffic stop. All right, ma'am. Here are your cards back. I want to thank you for informing me that you had a firearm on your side. Uh, appreciate your cooperation today. Have a great day. Great, thank you. So that one scenario was just about a routine traffic stop. So tell me about did you, did you appreciate that? How did it change your feeling about the, the traffic stop? Whereas if I didn't tell you and you found out later that I was carrying a firearm, how did it make you feel? For sure. I would start out by saying that in the eyes of a police officer, no traffic stop is ever routine. Oh. So my mindset in the car before I stop anyone is I don't know you, I don't know where you're coming from necessarily, I don't know where you're going to, and I know from my training and experience that folks usually are traveling in cars to and from crime, certainly not everybody, but it is a means of transportation that we have to be cognizant of. As I approached your car and you provided me with the concealed carry permit, I knew right away that one, you were a law-abiding citizen in regards to having a permit to carry concealed and two that you wanted to be as open and honest with me as possible and that is always the most appreciative right. uh, and that, you know that's what we, we try to get across is responsible firearm ownership um, we talk about it's a huge responsibility not only in your home and, and when you're using it but also for public safety and the responsible thing to do is to inform this officer that you're carrying a concealed firearm everybody needs to stay safe so let's look at scenario number two that was an easy one, but there could be a scenario where it's not just a routine traffic stop and you're not really sure why you were pulled over, you weren't speeding, um, you can't remember if you went through a red light or a stop sign, and for no good reason that you can figure out, you're pulled over. And could be, possibly, that your car matches a description um, that the police are looking for for another type of crime. So, how would that change what you do for me or, or with me in that exchange? Certainly. Again, not everyone that we stop understands what the mindset of the police officer is in the police car. Mm -hmm. I would have information that you may not have that couldn't get out quick enough to start our encounter. I would never begin an encounter. Maybe it wouldn't be prudent for me to inform the operator of a car right away why I stopped, even though, in my own knowledge, I know that I have every right to be stopping you and speaking with you. So, uh, as I walk up to the car, the most important thing any motorist can do is just listen to the instructions of the police officer. Do what he tells you to do. <laughs> that will de-escalate 99% right. uh, of any mm -hmm. issue that we could possibly mm -hmm. have. Uh, there may be an opportunity where I would ask you to step out of the car before I even ask for an ID. 
In that scenario, if you know that you're carrying a firearm, it would be most prudent and appreciative if you would inform, officer, before I get out of the car, I just want you to know I'm carrying a concealed firearm and I do have a permit in the state of Pennsylvania. And that will allow the officer an opportunity to respond appropriately. And whatever order follows would be most important for the operator of that car to follow that specific instruction. Would there ever be an occasion that you would ask for the motorist firearm? Like, you know I have one because I just showed you my permit. When would you ask for that and how would that take place? There would be several logical and extremely prudent reasons why a police officer may request to see the firearm that you're carrying or may feel more comfortable being in possession of the firearm that you're carrying before the encounter is concluded. There are so many legitimate reasons that I would hesitate to provide each and every one, but I would encourage anyone to follow the direction of the officer. It's a very brief encounter. Most likely the gun is being taken uh, for the officer's safety, state of mind, or possibly another reason. Always most prudent, though, to follow the instruction of the officer. There would be valid reason for that. It's generally a very short period of time, and the firearm would then be returned. To the but most often you would ask me to unload it and, oh, and hand it to you in an unloaded position, or would not I would recommend any time a handgun is transferred from any person <laughs> to any person, the handgun is unloaded, slide lock open, slide lock open okay. handed, grip first, as opposed uh, right. to the officer. Keep it in a safe direction, which might be dicey inside the vehicle. And again, the again, if there's any question, it would be most prudent to ask the preferred method of right. the officer. Right. How would you like me to obtain the firearm? How would you Very like good. me to unload the firearm? How would you like me to hand you the firearm? Right. And those things will keep everybody safe. Good job. Well, Just certainly. Keep on, <laughs> keep my people down. <laughs> no, obviously, uh, on any situation, on any encounter, if I can see where any person's hands are, I'm feeling uh, a level of comfort. Because okay. right. anyone's hands are gonna be the first to either grab a weapon, to clench a fist, to make some type of furtive movement. So certainly an officer would be much more at ease right. knowing where the occupant vehicle's hands are at all times. Mm -hmm. During the initial encounter and the subsequent encounter with the police on a traffic stop, I would encourage every motorist to calmly keep their hands in a visible position for the officer. Right. If there's any concern of where your hands are or the need to reach for any item anywhere else in the car, I would simply ask, is it acceptable for me to reach in this direction? Would you like me to get this card? Right. And leaving your hands at all times where an officer can see. And that really is good advice for anyone carrying or not carrying a firearm. Right. Uh, because it allows for a comfort level on a traffic stop. And I believe in 99.9% .9 of the situations, the officer would reciprocate in a calm and pleasant right. demeanor. So what we learned here is that we provide a comfort level for law enforcement and the safety for ourselves, too. If we inform them and listen to what they tell us to do, I mean, we don't need to get confrontational. We don't need to be argumentative. It's for everybody. We keep everybody safe. We don't want any sort of conflict going on. And there you have it. My friend, the Corporal, Dr. Shaw, thank you thank so you. much. And remember, show that concealed carry permit when you turn over your license. It's going to be in everybody's best interest. Even though the law says you don't have to, you probably should, and it's a good practice to do so. I'm Kelly from Armed and Feminine. Keep yourself safe, and remember, it's your life. Protect it. And he protects me.